today on Ask This Old House. I'm going to help a homeowner soften their water. It all starts right here at the Grand Canyon. This is new technology to me, but I don't know if you're up for it. I think uh, we should, might want to give it a try. Wow, that is sour. It tastes like my kid's candy. Absolutely. Every appliance comes with at least an install manual, a warranty card, and a receipt. I'll show you a smart new way to organize them. And this old door is going to be used to make something completely new. And we'll show you how to build it. OK, now we're ready to start assembly. That's next on Ask This Old House. Hi there. Kevin O'Connor and welcome back to Ask This Old House and a brand new season, our 16th in fact. And over those 16 years we have answered thousands of your questions and put on a lot of miles. We have been to every state in the country and even a couple foreign countries as well. Hey guys, hey. so I'm thinking right. to celebrate our 16th season, you know what I think we should do? What? Clean up. What are you talking about? It is a mess around here. I was down in the storeroom, Roger, and there are like 20 shovels. Uh, they are not <laughs> my shovels. I don't, care. I don't care whose shovels they are. We're going to get the stuff out of here, get some organization. And Mr. Silva, <laughs> right here, Pops. Look up. Doors everywhere down there. What are you going to do? I have plans for those doors. Don't you worry about it. Well, just make sure you clean the stuff up. And Richard, there's plumbing stuff everywhere. Where is yeah, he? And where is he? He's out sightseeing. What? Huh. Yeah. Sightseeing. Nice. Can you believe it? Nice. The Grand Canyon. It is one of the most majestic geological formations on this entire planet. It boasts miles and miles of incredible views of its distinctive red colored rock. There are dozens of different layers and these have been formed, really carved out over millions of years by the forceful water of the Colorado River. Arizona is in the middle of the desert. There's very little access to fresh water. In places like Phoenix, about 200 miles to the south, they almost completely rely on this river as the source of their drinking water. But when they take it from here, they get more than just water. Steve? Hi, Richard. Nice to meet you. Hey, nice to meet you. Welcome to Phoenix. My pleasure. You got quite the hacienda here. Thanks. We like it. We're pretty happy here. Been here a couple of years. We actually came from a town in Kansas with right. the world's best drinking water, if you can believe that. Really? A lot yeah. of people say that. Really? No, they give out awards. They actually did a study in the little town we're from, won the world's best drinking water. Well, clearly you're not in Kansas anymore. You got a little issue with your water here? That's right. We've got some strange things going on. All right, let's take a peek. Sounds good. What is not to love about this place? Master bedroom right off of the pool and the waterfall. I love it. Yeah, we like it a lot. But the reason I wrote you is we're getting all kinds of buildup and white stuff on all of our fixtures and things like that. Okay. If you take a look in here in the shower, you can see it best here. There's all this stuff and it affects the way the water oh, flows. Yeah, I've seen that. Oh boy. So I got to ask you, when you use soap, is it hard to get lather? Yes, hard to get shampoo, suds, and our skin seems to be really dry. Well, you have the classic signs of hard water. I don't know if you realize it, but the water you get comes from the Colorado River. The Colorado River has been carving its way, creating the Grand Canyon for all these years, and water is the universal solvent. It's going to pick up minerals, calcium, magnesium, and it carries it in the water and it shows up inside your house here. Okay. And most of your neighbors have some sort of water softener, some sort of tank to make the water softer. Yeah, I think I have something like that in the garage. You have a softener? I think so. All right, let's see what you got. Want to tackle all your home improvement projects with confidence? Join This Old House Insider, a new streaming service from This Old House, the iconic Emmy-winning series that inspired a generation of home enthusiasts. Stream over 1,000 episodes of This Old House and Ask This Old House commercial free. Watch it all in the This Old House app and join live online Q&As with our experts. Best of all, you can try Insider free for seven days. To join, go to thisoldhousemembership.com. So here's the tank I was telling you about. Okay, so that is not a conventional water softener. Water softeners generally have two tanks. In the main tank, it has these resin beads that have been charged. And when they're charged, they actually start to attract the magnesium, the calcium, really the scale that you see inside the house. Over time, it starts to collect it, and then you back flush that stuff to the drain. 
then you have to recharge it again. So in that second tank, it's filled with brine. That's sodium, salt. So now you as a homeowner have to fill that tank with 25, 30 pounds of salt every 30 days, okay, and then it recharges it again. Now this one, single tank, is actually different. It's a, it's a filter, first of all. Water goes down to the bottom, comes up through multiple stages of filtration, and then at the top it's got those resin beads again, but these resin beads will actually last for five years, not 30 days. Now, what happens is at the end of five years, you got to take this thing, recharge it back at the factory, rebuild it, okay? So it looks like the previous owner, this is, you've been here three years, you haven't used it. Looks like the previous owner didn't want to recharge it, so it's been unplugged. So we could, at the least case, we could take this out, send it back to be recharged and rebuilt. But I'd like to talk to you about it as an alternative to this thing. That sounds great. All right, so here is a whole house water conditioner has two chambers, one's a filter, one's the conditioner. Now in the first chamber, water starts by passing through a cartridge like this. Water passes through this mesh, and inside of it is this, granulated activated carbon. Now granulated activated carbon's been used forever to really clean up taste and odor in water. So it'll pass through and leave here, and at that point, we've sweetened the water for taste, but we haven't done anything about the magnesium and the calcium. So then it would leave, and come into this chamber right here. So in the conditioner, there's a second cartridge. Now this cartridge is actually PVC, and you can see there's small holes right here. Water passes into here and can only go in through these small holes and then work its way slowly through here, and it's going to pick up something called citric acid. Now citric acid, you've actually seen before, you've actually tasted before in your life. Take a taste of that. I'm going to eat this? You are, right now. Wow. That is sour. Okay. It tastes like my kid's candy. Absolutely. So this is a, actually a food grade material that's used in ki kid's candy and in, in many different uses in the food industry. But what it gives water is very unique characteristic. And unlike the resin that attracts the magnesium and the calcium and then you have to discharge it to a drain, what citric acid does is it encapsulates the magnesium and the calcium and keeps it in the water solution moving through and doesn't let it bond onto the pipes. And that's safe to drink? Absolutely. Magnesium and calcium is only a cosmetic issue in the house like this. There's no issue with anybody drinking it. Is it going to make my water taste like my kid's candy? No. I mean, just like a brine solution did not make the water taste salty, this isn't going to make you taste like lemonade or lemons, okay? So this is new technology to me, but I don't know if you're up for it. I think uh, we should, might want to give it a try. Yeah, it sounds like a better solution than that, though. Right. Yeah, that one's not working. All right, we have the refrigerator out of the way. Now I'm just going to shut off the lines going into the old conditioner and then open the bypass. That'll mean the house will still have water. And we're just going to break these union connections. All right, Steve, let's muscle this thing out of here. Mount the system, I'll screw these mounting brackets to the filter. Then I'll attach them to a piece of scrap wood that I screwed into the studs. Now we can measure and cut all the copper piping to connect the water line to the filter. We clean and flux each connection and then solder all those connections together, making sure that the main line goes into the filter first and then out of the conditioner and back to the house. All right, solder connections are made up. Now we're going to put together our cartridges. This is our granulated activated carbon filter. Water direction comes this way. Direction of arrow is this way. And then we just put our cartridge on. OK, snug that up. Just grab the wrench. OK, just snug it up. OK, that's one. I'll give you that. Now our conditioner cartridge, this way. All right, send the water out to the house. Now, the care and feeding of this thing is pretty straightforward. Depending on how much water goes through and how bad the water is, you're gonna to have to change both of these cartridges every six months approximately. Okay. That's simple. To close off these valves, hit the buttons right here to relieve the pressure, and then that wrench will loosen it, and then you just reverse it. They also tell me 
that within 30 days, this citric acid will actually clean all the scale off of the shower heads in your house. What? Send me an email. I want to see this. I'll do it. Thanks uh, for coming to Arizona, Richard. It was my pleasure. It was great to see the Grand Canyon, finally. I'm glad it's not showing up on your fixtures anymore. Be good. So new technology, what do you think? Well, we'll see. I'm excited about the prospects of it, you know? Uh, most people that have hard water have a softener like this. Right. And that requires salt, you know, to go inside of this tank. You use the salt to charge these resin beads right here. And these sit inside this tank. It, now these resin beads become attractant to lime and calcium. And over time, you have to flush it. But there's a trend now in places like Phoenix where they don't want to see these anymore. Why is that? Well, it's the impact of this salt that's now been absorbed into the water showing up at the sewage treatment plant. It's more expensive to treat it, to clean it up again. How much salt are we talking? Well, this is a 40-pound bag. You might go through this once every month. Wow, okay. times every house in town. That's right. It's all right. going to accumulate back right. at the treatment With facility. With our citric acid one, this is six months versus one month, and this has much less impact at the sewage treatment plant. Okay, and how about Steve? Have you heard from him? Yeah, he said it was uh, much improved. It's been a little more than 30 days. It's not completely clean, but it's on its way. Oh, that's good news. All right, good information. All right. If you're like me, you've got a file folder somewhere in your house that looks like this. It's every manual, every warranty card, every receipt that goes with every appliance in your house fridges, washing machines, even toasters and coffee makers. Problem is, the longer you live in your home and the more stuff you buy, the less helpful this file becomes. What if there was a way to save all the information in these manuals on your phone so you can easily access the data when you need it? Here's an app that uses Optical Character Reader, or OCR technology, to scan the nameplate of virtually every device in your home. It analyzes that nameplate and can identify the make and model of your appliance. From there, you can pull up important information, like the owner's manual. You can also easily find replacement parts, like filters, and order them through online retailers with one click. You can also register for warranty and recall information, so you'll be the first to know if your device needs service. But this app can do much more than just save manuals. It can become a virtual catalog of everything in your home. You can group things by room and save everything in that space the exact paint color for the walls and the trim, the size and style of light bulb, even the ink cartridges in your printer, so you'll always have that information at the ready. You can use the camera as a scanner to save things like receipts. You can also add your own videos with critical information for your home, like the location and function of the main water shutoff or the main electrical circuit in the case of emergency. Now, the only thing to figure out is what to do with all this paper. Hang on a second, Tommy. The drill was to get rid of all the old stuff, not to bring it up here. What are you doing? Well, this is an old door. There's a couple of them down in the uh, storage room downstairs. How often does that happen, right? You buy a house, the guy leaves you, you know, a dozen doors, and they sit in the basement forever. All the time I see it in basements. Well, this door's in pretty bad shape. I mean, it's got some holes here. Maybe there was a towel bar. It's got the mortise, but no hardware. It's a shame because you, if the hardware is there, you might be able to sell that online or something. The finish is gone. There's a big gouge out of that bottom corner there. So you think it's not good enough to take to a salvage yard? Uh, I don't think I'm going to get much. By the time I go down there, I'll be lucky to get $5 for it. Huh. All right, so throwing it out? No, I'm not going to throw it out. I want to build something with it. This has got some great wood in this door. It's old. The door's probably 70, 80 years old. And I look inside the mortise here, and it looks like it's probably straight grain fir. Ooh, we like that. I like that wood. It's nice and stable. So if I cut this up, and we'll build a little project out of it. Thinking, what are you going to build? I'm thinking of a shadow box, maybe something like 16 by huh. 20. So like a picture frame, but three-dimensional, so we can actually put stuff in it. Exactly. Put cool. a glass front on it. I like it. All right. All right. So let's cut this up and salvage the wood. Nice. To get started, we're going to break the door down into pieces using a circular saw. Now we want to true up the styles on the table saw. Now I'm going to shave off the stain using my table saw. Each side I'm going to take two passes because the saw blade won't go up high enough. 
If this was lead paint on the door, I couldn't do it this way. I want to use this one style to make the four sides of the shadow box, but before I cut it to length, I want to make a rabbit cut in the inside corner to hold the back. and a dado cut for the glass. For the back of the shadow box, we'll clean up one of the recessed panels from the door. Okay, now our piece is roughly sanded. And this is gonna be the outside or the front edge right here, and you can see where the screw holes were from our hinges. And also, there's a couple of holes on the inside right here that I want to fill. And I'm going to fill those using some wood glue and the sawdust from sanding, along with some filler strips on the bigger holes. Get a good match if you use the sawdust from this and some scrap wood from this, too. Absolutely. So the first thing I want to do is I want to put some glue in the holes. Just going to finish this with a little bit of Danish oil and we're actually going to put it on, wipe it on before we make our cuts so there's no oil on the face of our miters. Okay, and when we're done with the oiled rags, into a bucket of water, keep them safe. With our finish all dry, we can now cut them to rough length. Then we'll miter each piece to length at 45 degrees. Now that we have our four pieces cut to length, we can cut our back to size. All right, here's the wooden back for our shadow box. All right, and here's the piece of glass that we bought from the home center. They sell it in a couple of different standard sizes, so we're gonna have to custom cut it right here. Right, now I want the glass to be the exact same size as the back, and if I cut it with a glass cutter, it will be slightly bigger, and that's because the edge is offset to the cutter. Right. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make it even on the bottom, I mark the glass with a marker over here, slide it over, make it even on the bottom here, and put a mark. Okay, so now I'm just gonna take my back and turn it sideways because it's longer, and I can do this in one pass, and I wanna make sure I do it in one pass. Let's slide it over, and then check it with my cutter so that I'm on the line, allowing for the edge. Now, I'm ready to cut, but before I do, I wanna dip the tip of it in some oil to lubricate the wheel. And I wanna make it in one pass. I don't wanna go back and forth. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna get started, and I'm gonna go right across the glass. Okay. Turn the glass. So I get just over the edge of the table. I'm gonna pick it up slightly and drop it. There's my cut. Beautiful. So satisfying. <laughs> and we'll make a second cut on the glass the same way. Okay, now we're ready to start assembly. We're gonna glue it together with this polyurethane glue. And it's actually clear. Now the first thing I want to do is wet the end. Now this glue is actually water activated. So we now put some glue right on the wet edge. Now 
All right, now we're going to hold it together with a couple of brads. Go for it. Okay, now we'll do this joint here. And pin this one. Okay, and pin it. Now the next thing we need to do before we put our final side on is slide our glass in. How many people you think are going to forget to do that? <laughs> yeah, I don't want to forget it, especially when we're gluing it. I'll get it. All right, I'm just going to wet these joints so it don't soak the glass before you slide it in. And I also want to put a little bit of glue on there. Wet these edges. A little more glue. And we'll lay it on there. Nice. And we'll put it's a strap clamp, so when I tighten it, it should bring all the joints in nice and snug. While our glue sets up, we can install our back panel. We're going to attach it with screws so we can remove it as needed. Not bad, Tommy, especially considering it was just an old door a little while ago. That's right. All right, one last thing. We need to sign it. Ready? It's a nice touch, Tommy. Yeah, Look at good. that. Hey, boys. Oh, what do you boy. think of the shadow box? This is a piece of art. Look huh? at it. It's all, all we got a little came lumber. We got a little distracted. Yeah, we we're cleaning up? Yeah, we found the boxes of pictures. Oh, Roger, boy. remember that? I... This was a fun one. <laughs> Let me see. <laughs> you. Roger, remember you? <laughs> this is my How about this one? Oh, oh, nice. Look at Tommy's look. Yeah, no, it's not disgusting. You can blame me. It's the look of disgust. So we found hundreds of pictures. How many can fit in your little picture box? You can get a few in there. Face down. Face down, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, listen, until next time, I'm Kevin O'Connor. I'm Richard Theory. I'm Roger Cook. And I'm Tom Silva. For Ask This Old House. Say, uh, you still have that tattoo? Of course I do. What? Oh, I'm, my what? God. You, I would never oh. take that. Yes, you, forever. You right? really Roger? are weird. Forever. Awkward. You are so <laughs> weird. Awkward. <laughs>Next time on Ask This Old House. I've got a leak, and it's coming up from an unusual place. It's coming out of the overflow tube. This is an important safety device on any water heater, and it should not be leaking. I'll show you the fix. And I'll show a young fan how to build her very own toolbox. Just let the weight of the saw do the work. You're pretty good with that hammer. You've had practice. Thanks for watching. This Old House has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.